My Catholic Faith, number 88, Our Enemies and Our Friends. Our enemies are those who hate us and seek to do us harm. Before he was converted and became the Apostle Paul, Saul was an enemy of the Christians. He persecuted them. But he who loves his enemy is like the first Christian martyr, St. Stephen, who gave us a striking example of love for enemies. When his enemies were stoning him to death, instead of wishing them ill, he prayed, Lord, do not lay this sin against them. Acts 7.60 He was called a man full of the Holy Ghost. Why must we love our enemies? We must love our enemies because, number one, Christ commands it. Christ says, Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who persecute you and calumniate you. Matthew 5.44 If you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you. Mark 11.26 We must love our enemies for the same reasons and in the same manner we love our neighbor. For enemies as well as friends are our neighbors. Number two. Christ has given us the supreme example. Our Heavenly Father himself gives us the example. For he makes the sun to shine on the just and the unjust alike. From the cross, our Lord prayed for his enemies. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He who loves his enemy for God's sake is like God. He is like his Father in heaven. Matthew 5.45 He follows the example of Christ, who prayed and died for his enemies. He is like the saints, who have always loved their enemies for the love of God. For I have given you an example, that as I have done to you, so you also should do. John 13.15 He who does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life. John 3.14-15 Number 3. We ask God to forgive us in the Our Father, we say, Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Thus, we ask God to treat us as we treat our enemies. If we do not forgive them, He will not forgive us. If you do not forgive men, neither will your Father forgive you your offenses. Matthew 6.15 Can anything... Be clearer than these words of our Lord. How do we show love for our enemies? We show love for our enemies in many ways. Number one, we should not take revenge on them. When our Lord was reviled, he did not revile. Vengeance belongs to God, not to us. Do not avenge yourselves, beloved, but give place to the wrath of For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Romans 12, 19 Once a Samaritan village would not receive Jesus because he was a Jew. The apostles, becoming angry, wished to call down fire from heaven. But our Lord rebuked them, saying, You do not know of what manner of spirit you are. Luke 9, 55 And to him that strikes thee on the one cheek, offer the other also. Luke 6.29 Number two, we should return good for evil, avenging ourselves in God's way, by doing good to those that hate us. If we do good to our enemy instead of avenging ourselves, we put him to shame and pacify him. If thy enemy is hungry, give him food. If he is thirsty, give him drink. For by doing so, thou wilt reap coals of fire upon his head. Romans 12.20
We are reviled and we bless. We are persecuted and we bear with it. 1 Corinthians 4.13 Peter asked, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to thee seven times, but seventy times seven. Matthew 18.21-22 Number three. If anyone offends us and comes to ask our pardon, we must receive him kindly and not be proud or unforgiving. If we offend anyone, we should beg his pardon at once. Do not let the sun go down upon your anger. Ephesians 4.26 We are never sure of waking up again from sleep, so let us always be at peace in conscience by being at peace with all. Number four, when we are seriously injured, as in our property, honor, or reputation, we are not forbidden to claim our just rights before lawful authority. Often justice requires us to do this in order to prevent greater abuses. Forgiveness of our enemy does not require intimate association. It is enough that we treat him with civility and help him if he is in need. Number five, love of enemies is a duty of nations as well as of individuals. Nations should never go to war except as a last resort to protect themselves and their just rights. War must never be from motives of revenge. But cruelty in war is sinful. Soldiers must not treat brutally those who are disabled in battle or attack non-combatants. Number six. These are some practical ways of loving our enemies. To respect their rights. To avoid uncharitable thoughts and words about them. To show good manners towards them. To do them a good turn whenever possible. We should be most careful not to form a habit of fault-finding or backbiting, however much we are provoked, so that no one renders evil for evil to any man, but always strive after good towards one another and towards all men. 1 Thessalonians 5.15 How should we love our friends? We should love our friends loyally and in the sight of God. Number one, true friendship is always based on the love of God. If based on selfish or wrong motives, it is false friendship that results in ruin for those indulging in it. One who hates God can never make a true and a good friend. Relations based on pleasure or selfish gain or some evil purpose cannot be termed friendship. Such relations, unlike true friendship, disappear or turn bitter with the advent of misfortune. Number two. For a model of true friendship, we should take our Lord's friendship for his apostles, and especially for his favorite apostles, John, Peter, and James. Other particular friends of Jesus were Lazarus and his sisters, Mary and Martha. A sign of true friendship is the mutual support each gives to the other, the confidence each reposes in the other, the kindly correction each feels free to give the other. For example, Christ used to correct his dear friends, pointing out to them their faults that needed correction for their betterment. Number three, we should look upon our true friends as one of our most precious possessions. As Holy Scripture says, nothing can be compared to a faithful friend, and no weight of gold or silver is able to equal the goodness of his fidelity. Ecclesiasticus 6.15 Blessed is he that findeth a true friend. Ecclesiasticus 25.12 Such a friend adds to our happiness and helps us in times of difficulties, material and spiritual. Number four. We must, however, be careful in the choice of friends, making sure that those with whom we form friendships will be good for us. It is not advisable to adopt friends rashly or too quickly, 
on the spur of the moment, because of some temporary attraction or sympathy. How many people have been ruined on account of the company they have kept? We must never have as friends those who would destroy us in the friendship of God by causing us to sin.